I was never supposed to be here in this shop, in this place. Last year, I started a business and it failed. I lost a lot of money. I had to move shops for the fourth time in two years. And honestly, I'm so thankful I went through all of that. Let me explain. So today I wanna to explain how I got to where I'm at. Not just here in this shop, but how I got to where I'm at in my woodworking and my business and my YouTube channel. I'm gonna talk about that business that I started last year, how and why it failed. I'm gonna talk about how I got my start, where I'm going, and all the tools that helped me get there. But real quick, let me show you around my shop. Let's go. All right, this is my shop and I absolutely love it here. I'm so thankful that I ended up here in this space. Now, I've got 2,000 square feet, 1,300 square feet of that is the actual shop space. It's 52 feet long, 25 feet wide, and then I've got another 700 square foot of office slash storage space back behind you. That really allows me to take some of that seldom used equipment and tools and get it out of the shop and have as much space out here as I possibly can because that's really what I prioritize. I don't wanna ever feel, you know, I'm working right on top of myself or my tools are right on top of me. So everything you see in here, except for the CNC, is on wheels. I love the ability to just come out here, spread out, do whatever project, I can have multiple projects going at the same time. Now, I'm gonna take you around the shop and I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorite tools. I'm also gonna show you a couple of those shop upgrades that I've made. And then I'll get to that story of that business that I started and how it failed and everything that kind of goes along with that. But first, I wanted to show you guys the tools that I use to get started. Now, it seems like every video I get a bunch of comments about Oh, I could make that if I just had all of your tools. If I just had your $300,000 worth of tools. I do not have $300,000 worth of tools, not even close. But I'll show you what I got started with. Right here. These cheap, inexpensive, but really decent Ryobi tools. It was the very first set of tools that I bought because back when I first started making things in 2015, that's right, it's only been since 2015 that I've actually been building things. I was watching a lot of DIY YouTube channels, Ben Ueda over at Homemade Modern, uh, Mike Montgomery over at Modern Builds. But they were building a lot of really simple projects using very accessible, easy to get, tools. So that's what I went out and bought. This project right here on the cover of this book is the very first thing I ever made. But I did it with these tools right here. Then I bought a really cheap table saw and then I just kept adding to all of that. And I get it, tools are expensive. You make your investments based on what you want to do in life. Maybe you can't make everything that I can, but maybe you can make something. And I think that's the lesson. These three tools can get you started impact driver, a drill, and a circular saw. There's resources out there where if you wanna make something, you can. If you have that desire, then you'll find a way. The first thing I wanted to show you was this new workbench that I just built a couple months ago. And this thing has just been a rock star for me in the shop, mostly for doing epoxy pours. As you see, I've got an epoxy pour going right now. But the really nice thing about this is as epoxy drips off the side like it has here, all I've got to do since this is a UHMW polyethylene top, I just scrape that epoxy right off and it just pops right off. It's just a really good all around workbench. There are a couple things that I would change and I think I'm gonna do another workbench project coming up that kind of has a little bit of the same functionality, but something that is gonna be a little bit easier for all of you to uh, do yourself without having to have a CNC to do all this stuff. So stay tuned for that. And this was a shop upgrade I just did like a week ago. I've already used it to film top-down stuff. I can run my dust collection and my power cable up here, get it 
off of my bench. So if I'm sanding something, it's not constantly trying to catch on the edge of the table. Plus I added some LEDs just because it seemed fun. But this was just a, a fun little thing that I wanted to do. And it's already kind of paying off in showing how useful it is. I actually have multiple upgrades over here. You might notice this area of my shop looks a little bit different. I took that old assembly table that I built a couple years ago and I completely took it apart, saved the top, painted it with some black enamel paint, and then reconfigured uh, the steel base for that other CNC that I used to have. And now I've got a workbench that I can move around pretty easily, but it's still pretty heavy. And then behind me, you'll see, I finally got up my wall control tool wall, which is really nice to have. Also, this thing just came in a couple days ago and I haven't even had a chance to actually turn it on. This is the X-Tool laser box, I believe. I've got a project where I'm gonna use this to make some really cool, you know, Star Wars, type ships for a coffee table that I'm building. I'm really, really excited about that project because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. And that brings me to my number one favorite tool, my pride and joy. And this here's our pride and joy, snots. <laughs> my Avid Pro 5x10 CNC machine. This thing is the heart and soul of my shop. It allows me to do things that have never been possible and just opens up this world of creativity for me. And I just really, really enjoy using this and finding different and creative ways to make projects because I have this machine in my shop. It really is, I've said it before, but it really is like having a superpower. I get a bunch of comments telling me that I'm just flipping a switch and letting a machine do all my work for me. And I guess to an extent that's true, even though maybe not, because there's a lot of work that goes into creating these models and planning everything and then having it all work where this is just, you know, a dumb robot. that's operating off of a set of directions that tells the router where to go. I'm able to do things on this um, a lot faster and more efficient. Like this has become like my table saw, my planer, my joiner, my router table, all of that combined into one tool and I absolutely love it. Now, a couple months back, I did a video when I first got this machine in the shop and I asked all of you to help me name it. I got a lot of good suggestions, but here's what we're going with. Meet Jabba the Cut. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to show you around the shop real quick, show you some of my favorite tools and a couple of the shop upgrades. Honestly, I'm just, I'm so happy to be in this space. Now, I'm gonna get into that story of everything that happened with that business, but real quick, I wanna take a second to talk about this video's sponsor. Ever since I was a kid and that first NES showed up underneath the Christmas tree, I have been a fan of games. So what I've really come to enjoy is playing mobile games. And the best one of them all that I've found is Raid Shadow Legends. And all you've got to do is use my links down below to download Raid for yourself for free to your mobile phone or PC. And my favorite part of the game are just how amazing the graphics are. It really is a beautiful game to play. And this month, Raid just brought the latest addition to its huge huge boss roster and it's Raid's biggest and baddest and scariest yet. That's right, the Hydra. This thing is the ultimate beast. A super powered clan boss that's like mini bosses rolled into one. It's got multiple different heads. I mean, it's a Hydra. This thing is definitely one of the toughest fights in the game, but it's absolutely worth it because it can get you some of the best artifacts around. Raid's releasing a bunch of awesome new champions along with a brand new Faction Wars crit for one of my favorite factions, the Shadowkin. On top of that, there's a ton of New Year's events and tournaments, including a special fusion event where you can get one of Raid's newest legendary champions. This is the best time to get started in Raid, and if you use my link in the description or scan my QR code, you'll get some free resources and a free mystery champion straight away to kickstart your game. Now, I'm not gonna tell you who it is, but trust me, it's awesome. Just hit my link and see who you get. All that treasure will be waiting for you here, but only for the next 30 days and only for new players. All right, once you're in the game, you can find me under Johnny Builds, and if you're fast, you can join my clan. Okay, it's that easy. Just click on the link down in the description and I'll see you in the game.
Let's talk real quick about that business that I started last year. Now, it was a slab business where we were going out and getting trees that had come down or needed to come down, getting them slabbed up and drying them on our kiln, and then selling that lumber or using it to make furniture. It was a business that I was really, really excited about. And as I talk about how and why it failed, this isn't to cast stones. This isn't to lay blame all on, you know, my former business partner. I think all the things that occurred were because of decisions that I made. The most important one was that I went into business with someone that I did not know very well. I had only known this guy for a couple months. I was really, really excited about the idea. So essentially we got going, we moved into a large warehouse space. Now I have a full-time day job. I also run this YouTube channel and make all these projects, film everything, edit everything, do everything all by myself, which is another full-time job on top of my full-time day job, and then adding this new business, it was essentially like having three full-time jobs. And it was a lot, and it meant that I had to really rely on that business partner to manage a lot of the day-to-day -day operations. Essentially what happened was I found out there were some business practices that I didn't agree with. And when I confronted him with those things, it blew up, and by the end of that phone call, that business and our partnership was over. Lawyers got involved and when it was all said and done, I ended up with nothing. I lost all of my initial investment, all the money and time and effort that I put into the business, and then all of those lawyer fees, which were insane on top of that. The total hit financially was about $80,000. While that's kind of hard to stomach and kind of hard to recover from, and I'm still recovering from it, I'm grateful. I'm honestly grateful that that happened to me because I learned a lot of lessons. A, don't start a business with someone that you don't know that well. Really find out who that person is before you essentially invest all of your resources into starting something and creating a dream that you've had for a while. In my case, it was a horrible disaster. But it's the thing that got me to where I'm at right now. Standing in the shop, my partnership with Vintage Reclaim Lumber and using their slabs, which they have a kiln, they can dry those, and I'm getting some really awesome material. And then I've got the CNC machine here in this shop, and that's really opened up a lot of my creativity. You know, you, you hope that you don't have to go through an $80,000 loss to have these realizations, the fact is, that's what happened to me, and that's okay. I'm okay, you know, I'm picking up the pieces, I'm fortunate in that sense, and it's because of all of you. You guys support me, you watch my videos, and that is the most that I can ask for. In nine months, I can retire from my day job. And while this whole thing is my absolute passion. I love doing this. I love making things. I love making these videos. And I love seeing people who watch something that I made or found something else through watching one of my videos or however become a maker themselves. That is the most rewarding thing. But after all of that, this still has to be a business. I still have a family that I have to support, which is very important. You guys and gals, just by watching these videos, make that happen. Now, yes, I do have to have sponsors in my videos. That's just part of the business. I know some of you don't enjoy when you see a sponsor in a video, but just understand this is a business. I'm actually trying to make money, support my family, and that's why I do that. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching, for subscribing, really like helping me realize my dream. And I think the lesson in all of this is sometimes the most difficult situations that we go through yield the most amazing results. Let me share one more quick story and kind of that mindset. A lot of you don't realize that before I got into making, because I haven't always been a maker or a woodworker, for several years I was a runner. I think my first race was a half marathon. Then I decided I had to go run a marathon. I did a couple of those. I started reading about these people that were running these really long races called ultra marathons. And the more I read about it, the more I was like, I wonder if I can do that. I, I was definitely not a super athlete myself. So I signed up for my first 50 mile race and I trained for six months. I went out and I did it. 
I finished it in 10 hours. I ran 50 miles. So I did a couple more of those. Not just 50 miles like down a road, but 50 miles on trails over rocks going up and down mountains. And eventually, after doing 50 milers, I decided I wanted to run a 100 mile race. And training and going through that, actually moving your body for 100 miles is probably the most difficult thing that I've ever done. You know, the, the way you feel when you cross the finish line after running or walking and hiking and tripping and falling for 100 miles, it's really painful. But there is nothing, nothing more rewarding than that feeling. And I'm getting a little bit emotional when I talk about it because I can't help it. When you cross that finish line and you know all the people that you've that really wanted to see you succeed and help you get there are there and you have that sense of accomplishment and you've done this thing that you didn't even think was possible it's so rewarding and the only reason why it was so rewarding because it was so hard you went through so much pain to get there and that same mindset is what i apply now to this business and what i hope all of you can apply to your own lives. It's not always about what is it that I want to do. It's about how much am I willing to suffer to get the things that I want. I know I'm getting a little philosophical here. I apologize for all of that. I just want to leave this on a positive note and have this, this whole video be sort of a positive experience where it's okay to get knocked down. I got knocked down really hard last year and I got back up. And chances are, at some point, I'll get knocked down again. And I promise you, I will get back up. And I think those are the people that are the most successful people are the ones that just keep taking the lumps and then you get back up. It's so easy for me to be like, I'm never starting another like brick and mortar business. As we speak, I'm working on my next business idea. I'm taking my time, I wanna do it right, but I'm gonna do it again and I hope that if you've watched this whole video and you've listened to everything I've said, that you, you can take some of that away for yourself or maybe recognize some of those things within yourself that things are the hardest, they often yield the most satisfying results. Thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you back here with an awesome build video, <laughs> not another philosophical discussion. I'll see you back here next time.